Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hope all is well. Happy Monday evening. Uh, thanks for coming in, replay viewers. I appreciate it. And thank you, catch viewers, for being here as well. And catch viewers, if you want to watch live and chat with me, uh, feel free to download the Periscope app and uh, find me there, Penguin and Fish. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, but thank you for watching the replay as well. I'm going to flip you around. Hello. Thank you guys for coming in. Hey, Kathy. Hey, guys. Hey there. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday to you. I always have to figure out what day it is in my head because, I don't know, I feel like I'm working a lot and it's like, oh, yeah, it's still just Monday. <laughs> In my head, it's close to Thursday, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but tonight, guys, we are working on uh, my block of the Splendid Sampler. We're going to start the embroidery, and I'm uh, super excited. Yes, chain, 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 <laughs> tons of chain stitches. It's actually modeled after my grandma's doilies that she used to make. Uh, I think I still have it over here. She used to make doilies like this. This one I'm actually making from one of um, her patterns that she had, but the whole design is kind of modeled after this to get this sort of look, this sort of look for it. Oh, hello, Diane, thanks for coming in. So that's the plan of the block, and I wanted to actually use a purple color like that doily that I was um, that I just showed you there. And uh, it's embroidery time, I'm excited. We're gonna have fun. I'm gonna try and do, um, a, a, we'll talk about the chain stitch a little bit. We did that uh, two nights ago in our how-to scope. And I think I'm gonna try that kind of reverse chain stitch that I, I've never actually done that in a piece before. I've only tried it. <laughs> so we'll be experimenting. I like experimenting here and even when, with my own stuff, you know, I can't ever do anything the same, the same way <laughs> more than once. So uh, we'll try that kind of reverse chain stitch. Um, the scopes are, the, if you're on Periscope, they only stay on for 24 hours. However, if you go to catch, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash penguin and fish, my scopes will be up there indefinitely. <laughs> and that, unless all of a sudden I just take it all down for some scary reason, I don't know why. Oh, there, Kathy, um, right down there, Kathy Rock threw in the uh, address there if you guys wanted to grab it. But all the scopes are saved there. I'm doing every single block of the Splendid Sampler there, so you can see blocks 1 through 10 uh, finished, and now we're on block 11, which is my block. I'm so excited to be a part of this. Uh, if you guys are new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer as well, and I'm here every single night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time and we are ready to get cracking. I am using, uh, for, to transfer the design, I am using an embroidery stabilizer that sticks on like a sticker and it washes away in water. And the brand, my favorite brand for it is uh, Selkie's Sticky Fabric Selby. I love it. It's amazing. I use it for uh, almost all patterns that I download from the internet. Uh, and if you guys want to know more about transferring your design, I believe three periscopes ago, I, again, you can look at catch.me slash penguin and fish, about three scopes ago, I did a transfer how to, and I showed uh, several techniques on how to transfer design. Uh, so you can check that out there. Thanks again, Kathy. <laughs> You're awesome. All right, let's flip around and get going and, and let me know what you guys are working on tonight. I always love to hear what is happening. Here we go. I got, oh, I forgot to, I, I had this to show you guys. <laughs> so I've been playing around on eBay for a little while uh, lately, but look at this cute little guy that I got. Look, I am a measuring tape, pull my tail. <laughs> Isn't he so freaking darling? I, I had to show you guys him today. <laughs> oh, you're working on your quilt square, yay. Just relaxing tonight. And Thay, I, I saw your block online. It is looking amazing. Oh, you finished it too? Oh, awesome. That's exciting. Ooh, knitting your first sock. That's exciting. Oh, you posted a progress photo. Oh, I'm going to have to, I don't, I'm not sure if I caught that one. I'll have to go check it out. Harmony. Okay, so I am using this kind of purple variegated floss. Oh, I'm trying to get it in focus there for you. 
Uh, just because I'm trying to imitate, look at the name on this, Sweet Pea, isn't that darling? Um, I'm using a brand of floss that I've never used before for six strand embroidery floss. So again, that's um, going to be another experiment. Oh, quilting a quilt top from three years ago. Finally, you know, I'm uh, working on a, a seven-year-old quilt top. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at the quilting. It's all, it's all basted and I just need to quilt it together as well. I'm kind of itching to do that. I'm not sure why it's called floss. That's a kind of a fun question. Oh, thanks for the inviting the, the followers, Ashley. You're super awesome. You're just so good with that. All right. So it comes with six strands and I need to split it to three. And uh, again, I have not used this brand of six strand embroidery floss before. This is a uh, Weeks Dye Works. And uh, maybe floss is a British term like candy floss. Ooh, like, yeah, yum. Like cotton candy. Okay, so I think I got the three strands. I hope it doesn't involve a fine broomstick. Okay, so I am just slowly pulling apart the three strands and letting the ends dangle. Your family's all here. They are asking, how can you answer questions? Oh, <laughs> for funny. Uh, well, I see your comments and I can answer. It's live, people. They have a shop here in Fargo. Oh, fun. Um, my, uh, my husband's family is from Bismarck and Fargo is on the way to Bismarck. All right, so then I'm just letting it relax. Oops, put my hand right in the middle of your face. All right, and then the other strands. I use about two feet's worth at a time. Any more than that, and it'll get um, get kind of tangled. It is, it sure is, Band of Horses in the background. I'm uh, listening to Pandora. Oh, you know what? I'm about to get embroidering and I don't even have my design on here. Jeez. Okay, let's back up a sec here, people. <laughs> All right. So I have printed it. I've printed my design. Ooh, that candle is awfully close. I printed my design on the, again, the sticky Fabrisolvi. Here we go. Uh, hello, Vanessa. Hey, Cora. Um, so this is, it's a self-adhesive, fabric-like, water-soluble stabilizer. So that means it sticks on, like a sticker. Like if I pull it off, it, it's sticky. Uh, and then it, you can stitch right through it like fabric, and then it washes away in water. And we'll, we'll go through that whole process. Uh, I'm gonna cut it along the edge here, and I think I'm gonna put it on the entire piece. Last time when I did the block, I did, I cut out the shape and I had just the shape on, but I think I'm gonna uh, put it on the whole piece to add some stability. I don't know, we're gonna kind of experiment with this. Uh, there's so many ways to transfer a design. I like this way because I can just print it out on the printer and I don't have to trace anything at all, which is amazing and I love that. So I'm just, I'm just trimming it. Um, but yeah, I, I love the sticky Fabrisoli. So the other little tricky thing is that I usually like to embroider on a piece that's much bigger than my hoop. So this is the hoop I'm gonna use. And I don't usually like when uh, I have um, my edges overhang like this. Usually I'd like to have it on a larger piece and have this uh, the hoop kind of encapsulate the whole entire motif. However, um, you know, with this we made the block first and the embroidery overlaps the block. So uh, that causes, you know, that's going to add a little bit of a challenge. Um, what we could do, we could baste, your hoop was way too big, yeah, we could baste some um, fabric around it and then do the larger hoop, but I'm thinking I'm going to just try and deal with it. But that would be a, a, a way to do it. I'm thinking that just this extra um, edge that I'm going to leave on here will help. And last time when I stitched this, I actually didn't use a hoop at all. Yeah, it's too much effort. That's why I think too, Melanie. Um, it's, I mean, you know, it'd probably be smart for me to do that, but I'm going to just try it this way. So last time I also did not use an, an embroidery hoop at all because the, the sticky Fabrisolvi, the embroidery stabler, 
st stabilizer was enough to keep it stiff enough that I didn't really, I didn't really need the hoop. But this time I, I am gonna attempt it with the hoop. All right, so now I just need to remove it like a sticker. It has the paper backing, comes right off. Would you recommend embroidering before piecing? Um, usually, however, in this case, some of the embroidery goes on the outside of the border. So in this case, I'm embroidering after, but typically, yeah, I would recommend embroidering for, or, I mean, piecing first. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stand up so I can see right above. I'm just trying to center, center the doily in here. That looks pretty good, I think. All right. That looks all right. Oh, you're glad you made it early. Oh, you know what, this is um, Miss Brown, let me, See if I can see your name in the profile. Oh, let me know what your name is, Miss Brown. But uh, it is wonderful. I mean, it, you'll you'll see once we get to the point of where we take it off. It's it's really easy to take to take it off in the water. But again, the best part is I just printed this from my computer. I didn't have to trace. I didn't have to do a single dang thing. It is just straight up um, uh, just printed. So, you know, and that, you know, tracing is the worst part of embroidery and uh, this kind of takes care of that and that's why I love it so much. Uh, so this is stable enough that I could probably stitch through it if I watch my stitches, um, just if I watch how tight I pull my stitches. But again, I think I am going to attempt to do this within the hoop. So this is a six inch embroidery hoop. It just happens to be something I had. Oh, your light table light burnt out. That's no fun at all. <laughs> Doesn't make your needle sticky. Um, you know, I've only had it get sticky once or twice, and I've used this a ton, and it it happens if I'm in a humid area. Um, and and if when that's the case, I just kind of have a little damp rag that I just wipe my needle down with every once in a while. But Normally, I don't have a big problem with it getting sticky. So see, my hoop isn't quite big enough. I don't especially like doing this, but um, it's gonna hold it on the corners here, and then uh, I think it's gonna be enough with the stabilizer. Did you see the Instagram block where a woman stitches spider? Oh yeah, I did see that. I thought that was kind of a fun variation to do a little spider web, because that's totally what doilies are like, aren't they? They're just like little kind of webs. All right, here we go. So I just press it on there. I'm gonna gently just kind of pull this. I don't need to really pull it too taut because the stabilizer is gonna hold it where I need. So what's nice is I almost have this whole piece in. When I do this part out here, I'll probably take it out of the hoop. I might take it out of the hoop for this entire outline, but I am going to do it in the hoop for the middle piece. If they're watching you dissolve the big pieces last time, I cut out a big white space. Yeah, um, usually I would only do the little motif here uh, and not have all this extra stuff, but I, um, I'm doing all that extra stuff just because uh, it'll help protect my fabric a little, I think, um, in this hoop like this. But all right, so we're, we're in the hoop. It is, it's, um, it's tight enough. You don't get what I'm doing. Oh, we are gonna start embroidering. All right, so let's see. I always start with an away knot, and I will tell you what that is right now. Um, you start with a knot. An away knot is a way to uh, not have any knots in the back of your embroidery at all. Oh, thank you! I'm glad you like it. So I'm going to trim the end so I have a nice clean end. All right. And then I got my embroidery hoop here. Uh, to thread a needle, I, uh, I, I never go like this. So I'm never holding my, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm never holding my thread far away and trying to get it in the eye like that. I'm never doing that. I'm never licking, licking my floss or anything like that. All I do is I pinch it in my fingers like this, and then I gently 
or I slowly release the pinch. So you can kind of see it pop out a little here from sideways. So from the top, it looks like this and you start to see it. It's kind of hard because it's purple. But when I just start to see it, I put the eye of the needle over it and then I keep releasing it and it goes right into the into the um, eye. So that's, that's my deal for uh, threading. You don't leave your DNA and thread in. <laughs> no, you know, I used to do that all the time, but you know, then when I learned this way of doing it, I mean, there's no way of going back. All right, I'm gonna start in the middle here and do, you know what, actually no, I'm gonna start these little stitches here. Uh, I'm gonna just do those in one chain stitch and then I'll chain stitch around here and then I'll chain stitch around here. and. I don't know, if you guys go back to, we worked on this embroidery how-to a couple nights ago. And for this, I did two sorts of chain stitches. One is like my normal typical way. And then uh, one is backwards where you make the an anchor chain first and go in. And I've never done this before in a piece. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to attempt it this way now. But first I'm going to start with these little chain stitches. So I'm gonna make an away knot all the way out here, about four inches away from where I'm gonna start. And then we're gonna forget about that for now. What it's gonna do is it's gonna leave a big jump of thread here. I'm gonna do all my stitching and then when I'm done, I'm gonna weave in that end a little bit there. So I'm gonna just start right in the middle here. I'm using three strands of thread again. I know a lot of people asked on uh, on um, on Facebook. So I made kind of a big loop and I'm coming up through the hoop. I'm still trying to get used to this, uh, holding this big hoop here. And then I'm pulling it and then uh, the, because I went through the middle of, um, of the loop. Let me get you guys in focus. I'll try and do it at this height. My thread kind of stopped it. And then to do a single chain like this, you need to put a little anchor stitch by going just on the other side of the stitch. And there, then we got one little chain there. So I'm just going to go around, go around the whole deal. And we are just going to chill. This is, um, this is kind of what I love about embroidery is that you just get to relax and hang out and, you know, watch TV or chit chat and it just goes at the pace it goes. It's not about speed. It's just about doing. So how was your guys's Monday evenings? Or I guess it might not be evening everywhere for you guys. I just made it through the rest of, uh, I always want to say Game of Thrones, but it's not Game of Thrones. House of Cards. <laughs> I crochet, this looks much easier. Oh yeah, funny. Uh, yeah, a lot of people when they first saw this, oh, you have to go to the grocery store. It's the endless grocery store when you're doing the whole 30. Cora's doing the whole 30. Um, Oh man, I forgot what I was just saying. Sorry guys. Oh, making dinner. Oh, it's almost seven in Alaska. Alaska's on Alaska, uh, Alaska time. Like I think that's that's one hour less than than uh than Pacific, right? I think so. My brother is living up there right now. He's uh the he he grooms hills at a at a ski hill up there. Pretty mellow watching Blind Spot and you. Oh, <laughs> fun. Oh, rough day. Glad it's over. Oh, you need some crafting then for sure. Well, it's almost 11 p.m. where you are. Oh, in Ontario. Oh, 11. That's, that must be just an hour ahead of, hour ahead of me here. Oh yeah, I know what I was gonna say. Some people, um, thought this was crochet when the block first got released and which is kind of exactly what I was going for not to like make people think it was crochet but I wanted to imitate that look of crochet that uh 
you know, th those little chain stitches that crochet has. So we're gonna make, we're gonna make a good hundred or so uh, stitches in here, I think, little chain stitches. Oh, you have reinvented the heel flap of the of a sock. That's cool. I, I've, I, you know, I've sock yarn is so pretty, but I have never knit. I've never knit with, or I've never knit socks before. Basically, because of the idea of having to make two of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like after having to made one. Nice sock. I just can't fathom having to make another one. I suppose I should give it a try sometime. I know there's that technique to stitch two of them at the same, to knit two at the same time, but I've never done that before. A matching one, yeah. Those darn socks, you need two of them. Hey, Andrew's in here. Let me know if you guys are new here tonight, too. I like, um, I love trying to, you know, I love hanging out with you guys and I want to get to know you some more. Um, feel free to pop your name up and if you're new. You stick to knitting scarves. I'm kind of with you there, Melanie, for sure. You're new. Oh, welcome, welcome. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Hi, Julie. Uh, not new. Nope, Kathy's, Kathy's been around here for a while. Kathy, you might have been here since the get-go, right? I think, uh, I actually met Andrew here in, in person the other day, and he said that he was in my first scope, uh, which, and he knew when it was, it was in October, so I think I, I, I must have started, started this in October of last year. Michelle, not very new, nice seeing you. Hey, Lissa, so fun to see how folks are how folks are doing your blog. Yeah, it's that's kind of been fascinating with this whole entire Splendid Sampler is just seeing everyone's variations that they're doing. Oh, yay! On the Instas. Oh, bad connection for you tonight, Lashana. That's no fun. Try going out and coming back in. Regular since January, yay! We got the uh, Flaming Lips Pandora mix on. Oh, you're on your lunch break in Australia. That's awesome. Thanks for coming in. So you see what I'm doing by holding this loop? This is what I'm going to try and avoid to do, um, avoid doing when I do this kind of reverse chain stitch thing. And we're going to start that right now, I think. There, that's our last, our last, oops, I got that one a little tight on that one side. There we go, that looks a little bit better. I think I might have gone in the exact same hole and I'm pulling it through a little bit. But there we go, here's a little start, guys. Uh, let's see if I can get into focus. You can see a little bit of the variegation. I don't think this thread, this is variegated thread, but it doesn't go it doesn't do much. It only goes from this light to this um, little dark. It's pretty close. So you can, you can, oops, sorry, I hit you guys. You can kind of see it here. So it'll be a little, it'll be subtle. It'll be kind of fun though. All right, I'm gonna try and do, I'll do it on this outside first since it's a little bit bigger. So this new way, it's, it's actually new to me. I don't know, it might be the normal way that you guys do chain stitches, but it's new to me. Um, what you do first is you make your little anchor stitch first. So I'm gonna just keep my anchor stitch open a little bit there. Now you can kind of see that's my anchor stitch. And then I'm gonna make my first stitch, like a stitch length of um, what I want these to be. I'm doing, I don't know, a little less than a quarter of an inch. And then I go through my anchor stitch and I can pull that anchor stitch tight now. All right, and then I go back into where I just, the where I just came out. It's a little hard to see, um, and I'm wiggling all over the place, but see, this was my anchor stitch, 
and I went through that anchor stitch and came back around. So that's my first chain. So this is this is reverse. Like I don't know what it's really called. To me, it's reverse chain stitch because usually I start here and then make the loop and then go back in and catch it. How we've done all of these. Uh, but this one I'm gonna do a little backwards. So I'll show you the next stitch. Hopefully I can not wiggle too much. But okay, again I'm gonna do about a quarter quarter inch away, a little less. So now this is my last stitch right here. I'm gonna go underneath it. I'm just gonna swipe the needle underneath and then go back in the hole that we started in. And that's my second chain stitch. So you see I'm not having to hold my giant loop everywhere like how I was earlier. I was holding the loop, the big floss, and coming up through the middle. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, um, I'm just coming up where I want the next stitch. How about right here? And again, I'm just sweeping under that stitch that I just did. Like that. And then going back. And, and man, it's easier. Um, I wanted to try it, I've never tried it on a piece before, but it, what's easy is that I can just keep my left hand here holding the, uh, holding the block. I don't have to like have it hold um, a needle or hold the floss. Is it reverse? To me, it's reverse. Um, I know that, yeah, I'm still, I'm chaining around, I'm chaining, I'm chaining on top of the loop, on top of these loops. I'm just following this line that's underneath this circle. And I, I have to do like this little circle in here too yet. I'm just following, following the line. How long is this going? I need to leave. Oh, I will, um, I'm going to be on for a total of probably about 50 minutes or so. I usually go about 45 minutes to an hour, um, sometimes a little bit over. Um, and, and that's every night at 9.30. So um, if you want to come again I'm, I'm that's usually how far i'm on so i'll be around for a little while yet and it says that she started with the anchor stitch yeah so i instead of doing the loops and ending with the anchor stitch i started with a little anchor stitch and and am now doing the loops so it is reversed um i do i show it on Oh, no, no problem. I'll be around. And, and like like I said earlier, you can watch the replay at catch, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash penguin and fish. All my scopes are there. Except for my very, very beginning ones, because that was before I think catch was around yet. Oh, see now, look, we're getting a little bit of the variegated. Look, it's dark purple there and it gets lighter. Oh, it's really subtle. I kind of like that. Um, this, I'm, you, I'm using Weeks Dye Works. Floss, and again, I've never used their six, I've used their pearl cotton floss once or twice before, but I haven't used their six strand embroidery floss, and I have, I have a ton of it. <laughs> Catch that me slash penguin and fish, that's awesome. <laughs> the little emojis. Um, but they, they have so many pretty colors, and so many, it's actually almost all variegated, because it's, it's, um, it's hand dyed. So they leave a lot of that variegation in that comes with hand dyed floss and it's just beautiful. And this is, uh, I, I'm just excited about it. So this, I had some DMC variegated with purple, but this seemed just more subtle and it was just a little prettier. So I thought I'd give it a try. All right, I think I can get two, two more. We'll do two more in this top here. All right, so now we're approaching our beginning here. So this was our anchor stitch originally right here. Oh, purple's your favorite. Oh, I'm really kind of liking this purple too. I have a lot of purples in the quilt. Uh, so here's my anchor stitch. So I'm gonna come up on the inside of that uh, loop right there. So this last stitch is gonna kind of cover up that anchor stitch. I use another brand of variegated hand dye and it bleeds when you dissolve the fabric selvi. Okay, so I'm a little nervous about that actually. And I didn't do a test because I'm like, meh, we'll just give it a try. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous that 
Um, this will bleed when I when I take the Fabri Selfie all out. And it's not just about the Fabri Selfie; it's about it getting wet. Period. On on the light colored fabric, it's mostly re removed. Okay, yeah, I had a I, I was a little nervous about that because this is variegated hand dyed. On the packaging, it says it's color fast, but for industry standards, and I'm putting that in quotes because who knows what that means. Um, so I'm nervous that this might dye my fabric, but I thought, man, we'll give it a try. Does the inker, the printer ink does not bleed. Um, this is printed on a laser printer, so this won't bleed. It comes out completely um, with color catchers. I'll have to try that if, if, if it bleeds. I have, apparently you can print this to to um or with a inkjet printer as well i've not tested that though for ink bleeding i'm thinking it may bleed a little bit more there um i'll have to do a test sometime so here i'm gonna do around this little loop here color catchers i haven't heard of that before i'll have to try that um it would be with an inkjet so you can print to it with an inkjet i just have not tested it um, for taking it out, I would maybe print a tiny little piece and then and then test it. Maybe I'll test it on here sometime. So I'm gonna go around this center circle with the old way of doing it. So I'm not gonna make the inker stitch first, and that requires me to hold my thread out of the way, and I didn't have to do that before. Oh, they're like dryer sheets. Oh, I've never heard of it before. Color catchers. I'll have to look into that. All right, so then I gotta come up. I gotta make my stitch, and then I gotta come up through the. I gotta come up through the center of my loop. So I'm just gonna move my loop over it. But see how much more cumbersome this is. Helps you. Oh, it helps you set set it. That's kind of interesting with vinegar. And you know my hands gotta go this far. So I am. A, I'm kind of happy with this new way of. Of um the chain stitch because, or new to me again, um, cause this is cumbersome holding this down and having to come up right in the middle and making sure your, your loop is right. You know, the, it's gotta be inside the loop there. Uh, it's, it's less fun. I'm going to keep doing that. I think that, that new chain stitch is my, my go-to chain stitch now. Chain stitch. My kitten is attacking my thread. Oh no! <laughs> Kitty. Ah, they, that's what, that's what they're there for. You need like a separate kitty project that they can attack while you're working on your real project. I'm sure that never works. <laughs> a nitty kitty! Alright, so for this last one I'm gonna wrap it around where I started here instead of making an acre stitch. All right, we're ready to move away from the center here. All right, here we are so far. I'm just gonna kinda shift that around. I gave her the thread I'm not using, that's nice. Three months today, Andrew Scope. All right, here we go. We got our first tiny little bit. Now we got all of this to go. Um, we got a little bit of floss left on here, but not a lot. Let me think. Where do we want to go? Should we, like, what should my strategy be for this? Um, maybe go, maybe go up this detailed one and then jump to the next one over here, jump to here, do these, and then jump over. And then maybe start from the bottom again? I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, let's, let's start. We'll just start right here. All right, so I'm going to do my little anchor stitch again. I'm not sure I have a lot of Oh, I got I got I got enough floss to to start another one. All right, and then I'm going to come up where the first stitch is again. All right, and then going through the anchor. So this the first little bit stitch is a little weird pulling the anchor tight. All right, there, now we should be good to go. Okay. Stitch number one. I think 
we'll do four stitches with these loops. We'll um, do two sides and then two up the middle there. There. It's easier for me to keep rotating the hoop. All right, I think I can get around this without changing it. Oh, if I'm missing a question, guys, just ask it again. I think I missed missed what's going on down there. All right, we're let me make sure we're in focus here. There we go. Oh, you got it. You got it covered. Okay, nice. Rotate away. We're just aligned for the right. Oh, funny. Yeah, this is not a game of speed, that's for sure, doing doing all this embroidery. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that uh, you're kind of forced to slow down a little bit. Ooh, there I distorted my, distorted my stitches quite a bit there. I'm going to just kind of push them back in place. Chain stitch isn't really the best for going around tight loops like this, but you know, we're doing it anyway for this project for the sake of, um, for the sake of having it look like crochet. I know, Jen, I could not believe all the people that would get it done right away too. Was the three chain stitches for that loop? Oh, I did four. I did, um, I did one and two to the center and then one, two down. You could do three. I think for these I'll do three, like one, two, three. I don't know. It's just whatever, whatever you want to do. What I am going to try and do though is keep it consistent. So then they at least look like each other. So whatever I do, they'll at least look like each other there. Let's push this little circle in place again. There we go. That looks better. This looked easy last night. <laughs> All right. I think I'm, I got... Uh, just a little bit of thread here left. So I'm going to just tuck this in. So this is how I end my floss. I weave it in into the back of stitches that I already have. And I do that three times. So one, two, and three. And then I snip that. Oop. Let's get you in focus. This this phone doesn't like to autofocus, so I'm I'm keeping on. I have to tap it every time I want to focus. All right, there we go. And then I snip it right close to the edge. So there you go. There's no no knots at all right back there. So it's really nice and clean. We don't have like these little flayed end, ends everywhere from knots. Okay, and so now that's when our away knot. Remember that guy from the beginning. That's where that comes in. So I'm going to snip that off. I'm going to just completely cut that knot off. All right. Oh, I know. Isn't this like the cutest? It's just so pretty. I love this scissors. Okay. So I just snipped that away knot off and that leaves this piece of floss, right? So I'm going to re-thread that. Again, I'm going to do the pinch and release technique of threading. And I'm going to weave that in as well three times. And three times is just so it's nice and secure. It's actually uh, more secure than a knot. I do want to, you know, I haven't tested that in like a washing machine. I think I might, I might do a test of that um, one of these days here to prove that it's, it's uh, better than a knot. All right, so that was three times. Three times of the charm. All right, then snipping it close to my stitches again. And again, you can look at it. There is no knots whatsoever. It's just super clean. When I stitch them more, nothing's gonna catch on this and it's just gonna be real easy. So yeah, it does use, it does take a little bit more time. I did have to weave in that other end and I did, you know, I did use three more inches of floss, but you know, I think it's worth it. Um, when you have little knots on the back with the little ends of the knots, uh, when you pull your floss through, it can catch on those all the time, and that's not going to happen at all here. So that's that's kind of my gig. Um, here we are so far, guys. Let's keep going. I have that other that other uh, three strands here. 
So I'm gonna just thread that. I weave in my starts after embroidering it, after I have embroidered down. I weave in my starts. Oh yeah. So you can actually, I could actually leave a bunch of away knots everywhere and have a bunch of those flailed everywhere, all those little bits. And then I could snip them all and then weave them all in at once. It's a little more difficult with this because I'm going around and around. So I'm gonna keep catching them. So I wanna get them woven in a little bit. Oh, thanks so much, guys. I'm glad that you're liking it so far. Uh, I think this purple is going to be really pretty. It's going to be kind of like a big reveal once we take the Fabricelvi off, which is always kind of fun. Okay, this ends pretty good. I don't think I have to snip it. So again, I'm doing the squish and pinch and release. There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to keep crawling up this little... Uh, little pineapple, I guess is what it would be called in, in crochet. Um, all right, so again, I'm going to go about four inches or so away for the way knot. Zoop. Okay. All right, let's do this how um, we were doing before with that little anchor stitch first. Again, this is um, this is my first time doing chain stitching this way with the anchor stitch first instead of last so it's kind of it's a little it's an awkward start for me still here but I think we'll get it by the time we're done I think this uh, you know what I am gonna still try and do four chain stitches here so I can end in that point okay so that's my anchor stitch I'm gonna go through there and pull the anchor stitch tight Okay, there we go. Get that tight. There we go. And then finishing our first stitch, our first chain stitch. Oops. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate around again. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy, guys. All right. Wrap it up around the inside. It is nice, like I said, to just be able to hold um, hold the hoop and not have to deal with all the thread to all the floss holding um, by doing it this way. So I'm keeping my uh, stitches pretty loose because they're around these tight curves and if I pull them tight it's gonna pull pull all my loops kind of downward, kind of like how it did here. Uh, and I want to try and avoid that. So I'm going to keep them kind of loose. Get around there again. How many of this block have you made now? This is only my second time. I made it once for the pattern and uh, uh, that's it. Then I made adjustments from that, but it was good enough for um, the photography and that sort of thing. Um, so this is only my second time doing it. I know there's some people on Facebook who've already done it more than once, so so they're, they're ahead of me of, of how many times doing this for sure. I think I'm gonna kind of tack that centerpiece down. So did you see what I did there a little bit? Instead of, um, let's see if I can get in focus. So instead of, uh, like this is this keeps wants, wanting to slide down a little. So instead of going behind it, which is what I normally would do, I'm just gonna kind of grab it and tack it down with this last stitch to kind of hold it up there and so it's more, more of a point there. There we go. See, it's kind of, that last stitch is holding that up a little bit. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pretend that this stitch is the first stitch of this second loop. So I'm gonna start, like, I'm gonna go one, two, three for this one, and then one, two, three for this one. Oh, thanks for inviting people. All right, let's, oh wait, you know what? I almost did it how I used to do it. Let's, let's do it the new way again. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try starting at the stitch, instead of making the anchor stitch, so I've never done this before. Instead of making that anchor stitch, I'm gonna use where these two are connected as my anchor stitch. So I'm gonna sweep it, this might not work, but we're giving it a try. Um, I'm gonna sweep it underneath both of those. 
and use the stitches I've already made as my anchor stitch. And you know what, I think that's gonna work just fine. Yeah, Psh, awesome. So I'm gonna try and do that as much as I can to avoid making that little first anchor stitch. That, that worked just fine to me. So as you can see, this does take time. So I will be working on this for the next few days for sure. And then um, I've been doing that, Alyssa, and it makes sense. Oh, okay, great. So I'm not the only one doing that, perfect. Uh, thanks, Harmony. Um, so I will be doing this in the next few days and our next block is on Thursday. So uh, we'll, if I'm not done with this by Thursday, we'll just put this on pause and we'll start the next block because I always like doing the new block on the day it's released. And we'll see how that goes. And whenever we have time, we'll pick this up again if we're not done. Um, it's, it's only Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday. And that might be, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking we're not going to be done yet by then because we have all this outside stuff and the needle yet to do, or the, the hook. So I'm thinking this will be one that we pick up <laughs> later. One that we don't finish away and when we have free time, we, we always come back to. <laughs> I've had a couple of those already. I think black number four, that was all the, the flowers in the vase. And the the other embroidery one with the little the little kid in in bed with his his teddy bears and his teddy uh, teddy bunny <laughs> teddy bunny uh, those those two I've had to come back to a few times but I think all the other ones we got um, done before the new block was released all right last one here. Oh, I hope so. Thanks. I, I'm excited to see how it looks. I, I love this little super subtle variegation. Like it's barely there variegated thread. And I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Okay. I'm going to definitely tack down these guys once I do this kind of like how I did here. I think that's going to help, help me keep the shape of these much better. All right, I'm gonna come back up on this side instead of the other side. And we'll we'll keep going around these little pineapple sections. And, oh, here's where I was gonna tack it though. Let's see if I can just grab some of the floss as I go through. Oh, I suppose I could go under and then over. Yeah, there we go. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna go under the first one and through the second one. I've decided, to, oh, I missed that, sorry. You could write that again. You decided to practice and then I then it faded away. There we go. Oh, that works great. So that's gonna kinda tack it down there. We're kind of grabbing that other loop. Oh yes, the whole thirty. We're all pretty fascinated with the the whole thirty Cora's. Cora, you gotta be almost done by now. It was um day twenty last time I, I heard and that was that was a little while ago, right? All right, so two more here. Going to practice on muslin for about an hour. You know, uh, that's not a horrible idea. I don't think you need an hour probably, but it, it's not a bad idea to practice. Just just draw a line on muslin and just kind of follow it and, and see how it goes. And try these different ways of of the um, the different ways of the chain stitch too and just see what you like. I mean, you might like that other way better. All right, again, I'm gonna kind of grab this loop. There we go. Oh, look, now it's turning to this light lavender color. Okay, let's see. I guess we keep going up this way.
All right, so here, let's see. I want to sweep under. I don't know, kind of like, kind of like that, maybe. That'll be good enough, I think. So I'm probably pretty wiggly. I'm right in front of the camera here. I'm just trying to stay, um, stay so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm not too far away, but it might be a little seasicky. We'll get this little, uh, this little, this little pineapple done tonight, I'm thinking. So I, I started with, uh, about two feet of floss and then divided it into two. So, and this is it for it. So it can, it can do this circle and about maybe one of these pineapples maybe a little bit more. So we'll probably get a pineapple and then maybe one of these loops in and maybe this with each um, with each two feet of floss. So that'll kind of give us a sense of how long this is going to take. So this could take maybe up to, <laughs> to four days, four or five, or six days, maybe even. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, if I was chilling in front of a, um, watching a movie or something like that, I'm thinking it would take take less, uh, you know, cause I would do it all in all at the same time, but you know, I'm just doing it here with in the evenings with you guys. So it'll take a little bit of time, but like I said, that's perfectly fine. It's meant to be relaxing and we will uh, pick it up. If we don't finish it on Thursday, we'll pick it up. Um, when some of the other blocks are done, maybe three movies. Yeah, this will definitely, this is definitely more than a movie. Uh, my other embroideries that I do, I, I typically call those two movie, two movie embroideries. And this is definitely probably at least a three movie embroidery. <laughs> we'll call it almost a season of something, not quite a season of something. Since I watch mostly seasons of TV now instead of instead of movies. Sweep it under. We're getting the lighter variegated floss now, which I'm liking. Just a slight variegation. All right, two more stitches here. I'm excited to get this done so we can take the fabric selfie off. Oh, this is so, so helpful. I'm so happy, Ellen. Thanks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, and, the, you know, let me know if you have any questions or anything, too. And I'll, you know, try and answer them. Um, again, if I don't answer a question right away, just throw it up there again. There, this is our last little sweep through here. And like I said, this is the first time I've been doing chain stitching this way. And I gotta tell you, I think this is the way I'm gonna do it from now on because I I only have to use this hand. I don't have to hold the loops and all that. Um, I'm, I'm really, really liking it. So I definitely encourage you to try uh, this way of, of chain stitching. Like I said, I've not done it this way in a piece like this before. Um, so I'm kind of, it's been really fun. What's stitch for the hook? So I'm going to use a short and long stitch, I think. Uh, let's see. Oh, I never, I didn't get to that on uh, our little embroidery how-to the other day. Uh, so I didn't, let's see. I think I have it in the instructions. Okay, so here, here are the instructions. So what you do is you do a row of short stitches and then, or a, a row of long and short stitches. So it kind of helps to kind of draw a grid on this sometimes. Let's see if I, I'm gonna just draw. So sometimes it's easier in your shape to kind of draw where you want them to start and end. And obviously for the crochet hook, it's gonna be really little. It's gonna only be like two stitches, but I, I do, um, short and long stitches for the first row and then you do only long stitches from there on out but you fill in the gap that that short stitch made and so the third row you would be going in this gap you know up to your line 
um, and this long way like that. So that's how I'm going to do the, the hook. It'll kind of fill it in. Um, I'm going to do the stitches in this direction. There we go. Like this direction, kind of back and forth. So I'm probably only going to do two here. So like one here and then one, kind of like brick work. Um, like how you offset bricks to each other. I think that's how I'm going to do the stitches up here. And then again here, we'll, there'll have, be a few more. So I think that's the plan. Um, that will definitely be several days from now because we're gonna do we're gonna do this first. All right, so I'm gonna start going around one of these these upper loops, and we'll we'll do that. We'll we'll finish this floss, and then we'll call it a day. I'm I'm almost done here. We'll tuck in our our way knots again. I'm gonna come up. Try and come up in the middle of that one. There we go. So some people are doing this all backstitch, and I gotta tell you, like backstitch and lazy daisy stitches, and it looks so cute that way. So don't don't feel like you need to do all these crazy chain stitches like I am. You could just do lazy daisy stitches or single chain stitches for all of these. It looks so cute. And if you did that, you'd get this done in one movie, for sure. It'd be a lot faster than all these chain stitches. And, you know, I was tempted to do it that way, too, just because I like changing things up. But I thought I'd probably, I'd stick to my instructions since, you know, then, then if you guys, you know, in theory want to stick to my instructions, then I, then I can at least show you here on Periscope. So I'm, I'm sticking to it this way. But I think it would be fun to do a quick one where you just do a bunch of lazy daisy stitches and then some back stitching and you'd be done in no time even right here I could do I could do some back stitches instead um, but but I'm not gonna I'm gonna do the whole bit bunch of chains Ooh, we're gonna have to grab that one when we get back at the bottom I like this song. Or it's uh, uh, it's from. I don't know if you guys can hear the music at all. Oh yeah, you guys were like you, people were commenting on it before. Um, this is from that movie, or they used it in that movie Limitless, and I just really like that <laughs> movie with Bradley Cooper where he takes that you know magical drug that makes his makes him super duper smart, like allows him to use all of his brain power. And I was thinking, man, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of really like that movie. I love those sort of movies in general, though. Never saw that movie. I don't think it was all that popular. It's called Limitless, and uh, but you know, it's Bradley Cooper, and I like him, and I just like kind of those sciency, you know, kind of sci-fi movies. I, I like those. All right, there's our first little loop-de-loop. -loop. They did? Oh, God. That sounds kind of scary. I'll have to check that out, though. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I wonder if that's any good. Probably not. I don't know. Network TV is kind of... Is it network? It's probably network TV. I personally liked it, but it's kind of my type of movie, and not everyone likes that type of movie. All right, we are getting close to not having floss left, so we are, I think I might, you know what, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to make this other loop here, so we're gonna have to start that loop another time. I think I could maybe get, you know what, maybe I can. Let's see if I can. It only takes three stitches, or three chain stitches. I would like to at least get this loop, because it would be a bummer to have to stop in the middle of it. Let's try and grab underneath there. There we go. And 
There we go. We'll have to fix up these stitches a little bit maybe when we're done. Don't want to jinx anything, but your phone has been so nice lately. Yeah, it's because I'm using a different phone. <laughs> that doesn't get warm or at all. So I, I used to be working on a different phone, my, my normal telephone, which is um, a Samsung um, Galaxy 6 or whatever. And it would overheat, uh, it would overheat, like it would be physically hot to the touch and it, it says we're overheating. You know, I kept getting that warning at about between the 45 and 50 minute mark. And it was always, we never knew when it was coming, and sometimes it was only after a half hour and stuff. But now I, I'm on a different device that isn't heating up at all, and it's kind of amazing so far. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like not even worried. I just have, now I have to pay attention so we don't go on for like three hours. <laughs> it's been nice choosing, choosing when to end the scope. Yeah, exactly, right, Cora? All right, there we go. We got these little guys in. I'm going to tuck in the ends and we'll see where we're at. I had just enough floss for that. So um, I'm going to go back and forth three times through the back of this again. And then we'll we'll take care of the the away knot and at, that we did at the beginning again. And we will call it. We got our first session of embroidery in. So I'm pretty excited about that. So again, I'm going to just, uh, here's our way knot way over here. We'll snip that off. Zoop. Okay. And re-thread it. All right. Weave in those ends. Oh, thank you, Cora. Oh, and purple hearts. Yeah, we're the purples. But yeah, again, you can see how I like to just keep this back nice and clean. We're not going to have any trouble with, with knots or anything on the back here. Okay. And there we go, guys. Round one is done. So, um, it, like you can see, it has that really subtle variegation in it. Uh, I think I'm going to really like that. Uh, it'll be interesting. I've, I, I've never used this uh, thread before. Again, it's the Weeks Dye Works, and I don't know, it's pretty. I like it. Uh, so let's see. We got that much done, so let's call each one of these a day. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's call this five, and let's call this six. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking we're here for six days yet. <laughs> and then we gotta take off the Faber-Salvi too, so let's... Let's call it six. Let's shoot for six days. Let's call this day number, well, let's call it seven days because we did, we uh, made the block too. So let's call this day two of seven. We'll see. We'll see if we can do it. <laughs> okay, guys. Let's let's go for five. Let's see if we can get it in five. I, I don't think we'll be able to do that, but um, my my estimate is about seven days, but we'll, we'll see. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Oh, thanks, Kathy. I'm glad. Oh, yeah, speed crafting. Well, you know what, though? Um, working on it every night, you know, I'm, I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. So, I mean, every night, a little bit every night, and it gets done. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys, again for coming in. Uh, we'll be doing this at least for the next two days. Today's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll for sure be working on this guy. And then Thursday, the next block, block number 12, comes out. And I think it's by Pat Sloan, and she did the first block with the heart. So I'm kind of excited to see what she has um, coming up. She typically does a lot of applique, so I don't know. Maybe we'll have another applique. That's just my guess. I don't know, though. So, all right. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Again, I'll be here again tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Central. And, again, watch the replay at catch, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash penguin of fish. All right, guys. Thanks again for coming. You guys are the bestest. Good night. <laughs>